and gentlemen, welcome back to a hoops journey. You'll have to excuse my nasal um, issue here today. Uh, yeah, we've uh, I've got the uh, the Christmas you know sickness from uh, my kid, and um, I'm finally starting to feel better, but sounding a little bit off. But we're not here to listen to me. We're here to listen to episode 125. Um, I'm really excited about this episode because. This is a guy, I think, like we can really dig into some stuff about how you can carve out a career for yourself. And I don't want to say like an untraditional way because he's done it and it's his way. But I think a way that maybe people don't even realize, you know, he's taken his background and who he is and been able to um, become kind of a star where he's at um, from the from B.C., um, he's actually on a day ahead of us right now too, which is fun. And I, it makes me like feel really cool about where the podcast is because it's all about connecting with really dope people and, and hearing their stories. And, um, it's probably a name, at least for BC listeners that would know. Um, and we get to know more about him and what's going on, uh, during the Christmas break as he's kind of getting back into season here. We have none other than Mr. Sean Anthony with us. How are you, sir? Good, good. Thanks for having me on the show. And yeah, I have the same thing, Christmas family. So if you're listening, that's the same thing. I got a little sniffles. So yeah, it's, I don't know what's going on, man. Like my kid, I mean, we, this is the funny part is like I posted on our Instagram and I was like, you know, we're, we're doing back to back episodes for the people. I'm recording this night and next night. And then I text you and I was like, yo, I can't, my, fa- <laughs> my family's down and out. And then I thought we were good. And I think that was like Wednesday before our Christmas holidays. And then I woke up Friday morning on because we get our last day was Thursday. And I was like, um, I'm not so good. And then fast forward to where I'm on Thursday now. And I'm like, finally, I finally like lifted some weights today and did a little bit, but I was dying. But up until then, I'm been kind of knocked out, man. It's kind of a bad little virus going around. So thanks for your patience. And we talked offline here, and you've had some a couple of cool weeks here. You got family in, like. Talk about that a little bit about where you are. And, um, you know, I think one thing with with the episodes that I've learned over time is it's cool. It's dope. You get to go play basketball. You see the world and do things, but you get pulled away from family and friends and those people that mean the most to you. And so you've had kind of a a fun time here for the last little bit. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So uh, as you mentioned, I'm in the Philippines. So uh, I'm in Manila. I've been out here for... 15 years now so it's crazy it's been a, um luckily you know i met my wife out here i have my own kids as well so i have a family here and um you know my grandparents are here my mom was originally born here so i i do have some family roots here but as you said i, I actually grew up in vancouver and lived in canada my basically my whole life until until i graduated um university and i came out here to play so um, I, I don't get to see my immediate family that much, like my siblings. My, uh, my mom comes back and forth, uh, but it was cool because this is the, the first good time. Filipino mom, man. That's right. Come on, she's got to make mom. she got to make sure the little boy is good, right? What do we got? Exactly. Chicken, chicken adobo. We definitely need lumpia off top. Lumpia is my crack. Don't mm-hmm. get it twisted. I mean, I teach it STM, man. Like our, <laughs> our coach's room for the tournament is like, let's go. But I don't mess with the pig's blood. That's where I draw the line. I mean, no, I, I still don't. And then, but yeah, I mean, every, everyone they call us Philams out here, Filipino okay. American. So, oh, do they? Part of our our initiation is we got to do the dinaguan, which is the pig blood. Then we got to oh. do the bullet, which is like the the cooked embryo egg, and then oh. <laughs> we got to do. Um, That's your it. rookie night, huh? Yeah, yeah, some stuff like that. So you're like what I wouldn't do for a couple tequilas right now instead of an embryo egg. Like, oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, but it's 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 been fun, to, you know. Um, yeah, have, to have them here. So uh, Christmas break is good, and then you know, as you said, there's a little bug going around. We actually had to cancel practice uh, earlier today because we we had quite a few guys sick on the team. So. Mm. It, I don't want to stop it in its tracks and we had this break we don't play to the tent so they said everyone get healthy in the next couple of days and then <laughs> basically come back on the second so yeah. yeah that's good and so um let's just jump right into it man you talked about sort of growing up in vancouver and what was life like for you as a young guy and you know why did basketball start to 
come around for you? And when did it start to, at, at what age? Well, um, as we were saying, I think earlier, um, I went to VC originally um, when I was young and you know, there's a lot of sports there. But when I was in grade two, my mom switched us uh, to a very religious school called Traditional Learning Academy. And they had zero sports. <laughs> I actually didn't play sports until high school because uh, I went to that school, which was a very religious school. And the only thing they had was a, a track and field program. So it's basically... Uh, so was that, was that K to seven? Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Or it, it goes all the way through, but I was getting in a lot of trouble um, in school because I had a lot of energy and no outlet for it. And I, my mom kind of realized that by then. So... Um, I guess yeah. To, right at the end there, she she switched switched it up, and I uh, went to St. George's for I think uh, the third semester of grade seven, and then high school. Okay, so time out here. You didn't know sports up to that, like nothing. Track and field. It's, I mean, I I may, might have done like like you didn't commu- you didn't community thing. Like you didn't do skating, hockey, like soccer, um, yeah, like I, yeah. I, I, not in school, but like uh, mm-hmm. we. So I did a bit of hockey for a few years, but that's pretty expensive sport and you know yep. as a young growing kid you know a new pair of skates a new pair of shoulder pads it's, it's so she put us in soccer for a bit and then the main thing was just track track and field because that's our, our, the high school i went to was in coquitlo mm-hmm. so like it'd be a school bus that would pick us up in the morning we get back at night and then that was it so the only sports program was really track so that's what's what i played until i mean i don't not even played that's what i did and I think she yeah. put me in, uh, there was, I think it was called the Olymp- Olympic Track Club or something in um, Point Grey in Carisdale, I think okay. it was. I would join that on, on the weekends and just basically she just wanted me to run and get my energy out. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, in terms of a background from family wise, like, was there no, that didn't, didn't, like, did your folks not play sports? Do you have siblings? Like, what, like, why was, Sports not that prevalent. Was it more just sort of like academic focused? We just, you know, we want you to do well in school. You need to focus in school. Like, why was there not really much swirling around that way? Um, a bit, a bit of both. I think mm-hmm. um, originally there there was some when we were in BC. And we were mm-hmm. and, but once my, my my mom's very religious, so once mm-hmm. we went to the learning academy, uh, it's like us. Uh, it might have been only. 60 students in the whole school or something right so they yeah. didn't really a, a sports program at the time mm-hmm. and it wasn't yeah it wasn't that but because once we were we were in schools like i went to st george's my older brother went to west point gray academy mm-hmm. uh, my, my my youngest brothers were like 13 years young and they went to bc basically the whole way through i think so um we're all athletic and we all played various sports now and it was Sports has been a big part of our, our family life, I guess. But for that little bit of period in time, there just wasn't mm. it wasn't <laughs> just with school we were in. Um, you know, we were track was basically it. But yeah, once I got to Saints, that's where I did a bit of everything: did rugby, track, and then that's where I I got introduced to uh, basketball as well. And, uh, I find that super interesting too. Like the only reason I keep bringing it up is because we're in this era of just sort of like early specialization right and sort of you know you've got to put your kid in this if they want to make it to this level and like we're talking to a guy who's been playing overseas for (laughs) over a decade and like you know i just find that very interesting and that's why kind of why i'm poking at it is that it's like you know what we all grow develop we go through our own process and there's never a really right time it's like almost becomes when do you find the passion for it if you want to take it to that next level i don't know if you I mean, I hope you agree with that thought and opinion because your path is pretty interesting that because we've had, you know, you're, you're 125 and people are like, oh, I played this sport. I played that sport. I don't know. We've never had anyone be like, yeah, I just kind of did track and field. And then I went in grade eight and played basketball. Like that's super unique. Yeah. Well, maybe, but I mean, I, maybe I'm, I'm underselling. Like, I think we were active. Like I would go maybe snowboarding and skiing. Sure. In terms of team sports, no, like there, there yeah. wasn't. Anything. I would go ride my bike. You know, yes. Yeah. BC is one of the best places to ride a bike. You know, like stuff like stuff like that. Not, but yeah, team sport wise, not really. 
Mm-hmm. And it was like soccer and stuff early on, but it was basically track. So yeah, and I, I get the specialization. I think even now it's right with the more pressure and then mm-hmm. I grew up, there was no social media. Right. So now I, I like the access to stuff for kids, like training for kids and this drill, that drill, whatever. Right. So it's, it's an insane mm-hmm. amount of info and data and sometimes bad info being, being sent out. So yeah, man. And that's my point is like, you know, kind of growing up in um, the era now, where it's like, I, th- I feel like just rolling out the ball in your neighborhood and riding your bike to your buddies and yeah. whatever, doing something in the backyard, just messing around and doing whatever is so much better than specializing at like 10 because, you know, you're yeah. still growing and developing and learning so much. Yeah. Like I would go, we, we, I, I mean, I just thought like I never touched a basketball before. No, I got of course. To- yeah. <laughs> in the backyard we had like a hoop i would mess around with my brother like stuff like that but maybe go down to the community center and, and on a random thing you know my mm-hmm. grandfather we'd play on an occasional round of golf or do a less you know there was nothing like really solid you know what i'm saying it was just yeah so yeah i think this too i think like and you probably don't know and don't feel it as much but i think everything out here at least, uh, you know, in the West Coast, and like, it's just like everything has to be so structured, you know? Like, my son, he's seven, it's like he has to go to this program and that program. And I'm like, I can't wait for him to just, we live in a little townhouse complex and I just want him to run out the front door and figure it out, you know? Here's he your boundaries him. in the neighborhood. And yeah. we trust you enough that we don't have to watch out, you know, walk out and watch you. But like, if whatever you and the kids in the neighborhood, just figure it out, you know? And I think we're missing that a lot. That's the creativity, right? You yeah. let a kid just figure something out. Then they, they have, you know, um, they develop differently, right? Like they, they invent their own games. And then, they, you know, like the cross, like if it's just a simple game of tag, right? Let's look like you're working on some agility, you're working on movement patterns, you're working on different things, you know? Or if they're just running around you know, on their, like let's say me, riding my bike, like I was, probably a very well conditioned athlete. And that's probably how I got away with stuff was I, I was athletic when I first played no skill, but just athletic. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you, you develop stuff when you do play it, you know, and you, you, you figure stuff out. So mm-hmm. yeah. Like, um, and I get a lot of questions like with my, I have three boys, right? So they're mm-hmm. four, six and eight and they're all, everyone's Ooh, you got your hand full there, boy. Oh my goodness, man. You couldn't plan it. You just had to get it done. Huh? You know, you just yeah. act like, oh, this guy, like, boom, boom, boom. Oh, God bless. I don't see many gray hairs there either, too. You're looking are good. They're yeah. Are they in there? Yeah. That's uh, not, I mean, I don't even have a hairline, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, people are always asking, oh, aren't you going to put them into basketball camp or this, that? Are they going to fall out? I'm like, no, you're not. I don't think anyone's going to ever be successful and take it to a, like a professional level or even a, a university level without a passion for it on their own. Right. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's exposed. I feel it's exposing them to everything and finding their passion and what they love. Right. So, um, I put them in little soccer camps. I shoot around a basketball hoop. I take them to like those little golf simulators. I, uh, like let them swim in the backyard, play with their friends and, you know, and figure out what they, what they like. And mm-hmm. to be honest, it hasn't been basketball yet, but, it could be in the future and, and you know i just let them figure it out love it man same philosophy over here with our one little guy you know what my kid loves he loves parkour that's kind of cool yeah and he goes to rbl basketball shout out to rbl like and that's you know and he skis my wife's a skier so he knows how to ski and it's like i agree man just put so much pressure on these little guys it's and girls it's like come on man they're kids like as long as they're into as long as they're into something you know so my kids, we don't call it parkour, we call it ninja training. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, you know, they like do little flips off the couch on the hair, climb up onto the yeah. ninja training. So right, not, when, not when they're at the grocery store. My kid thinks he can yeah. climb on everything. I'm like, Eli, you gotta get off the, the freezer, man. You can't climb on the freezer. This is not the place. <laughs> yeah. So talk to me about going from traditional learning academy to St. George's. That's a, that's a pretty big jump, man. Like that's a, that's a different environment wanting to be an athlete. It's a, you know, something else. So 
why did basketball, you talked about playing rugby, Bill Chamberlain? Bill Chamberlain was there. My dog yeah. right there. That's my dog. Oh, my yes. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Um, just talk about going going somewhere like that where athletics is there's a lot of pride there in that and and being a part of that and why basketball was sort of the one for you. Well, I wouldn't say it was the one. Mm. Uh, I just went there. Um, you know, I was just trying to fit in and uh, you know, I started making friends and you know, I was athletic, like just naturally athletic and so I was able to make various sports teams and one of the teams that all my friends was uh, participating in was the basketball team so just went to the tryout tried out wasn't sure if I'd make it because you know I, I had no jumper I had no no real skills but uh <laughs> kind of took a chance on me just because he could see me run around and, and do stuff um, so yeah I made the team and then that was the start of my basketball journey there um, just uh I guess that's that's the one I I actually like rugby the most to be honest with you early on. No way. Yeah, uh, I'm probably more skilled at or I mean more talented. Or, I don't know. I rugby using the, the using the quickness and just sort of exactly. getting by, yeah. dudes. Yeah, yeah. Sides a couple side steps, running in for a try or whatnot. It's a pretty good feeling, huh? <laughs> right. And uh, I think like it, it, there was someone uh, Justin Metzakoker. I don't know if you oh. know. so right. So he was kids. That's the OG yeah. right there. Yeah. That was a beast. Yeah. And he was a Canadian national team sevens player, right? Mm-hmm. We're here, just boom, boom, explosive guy, go down the sideline, uh, whatnot. So, and also played on the provincial team for basketball. The guy was stunned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that was kind of my, my first sport. And, but, um, it wasn't until maybe grade eight or nine that I, I started to realize, uh, you know, I kind of had a, a somewhat of a natural gift for basketball in terms of um, just the way I could run, move, get by people. Uh, I still wouldn't say I had any skill. It was just more, <laughs> it's naturally more athletic and, and gifted, I guess you could say it in that sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it just went, you know, I just started to enjoy it. Then there was the provincial teams. Um, and back then, we didn't really have a, you know, uh, someone to look up, you know, like someone who made it like a career until Steve Nash, I think, made it, right? And when I was in high school, I think that was, he was just establishing himself. I think he was still on the, the like, uh, might have been a rookie with the, the Suns and then onto the Mavericks, right, at the time. So mm-hmm. we're just seeing like, oh, like, Someone from Vancouver or someone from Victoria, I mean, someone from BC can actually make it to the NBA. And, you know, and, and this, there still wasn't social media. This, you didn't really know what, how he did it or what he did to get there. But, you know, you're like, someone did it, you know, and like, so we were, we were something aspirational to look up to. And then BC basketball came around and um, all, all these different things. So there was different programs that I could get involved with where I started to develop a little bit more as a, a player mm-hmm. um it's such a good point too because like it's like you don't know right like i still have my vhs of steve in the tournament which we can't even play anymore but um just didn't know or right? it's like what do you do and so the thought of like where you're at in those times to where you are now is like really we got here you know like i just think it's dope that we've got to a point where there's so many opportunities for people which we're going to get into um, to go and play pro basketball. Um, as you move forward with that, like, <clears throat> who were, do you remember, who, like, you played provincial team or did you just try out or? Yeah, and, I played. And, do you I remember played. who you played for? Uh, coaches wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the last one, um, the, the late coach of Pitt Meadows, Goulet. Uh, Goulet. Rich Goulet was my last coach. Yeah. Um, I think Brian Lee, my oh, okay. My high school coach was in grade eight. Yeah. Grade nine, I think, was the Kitsilano coach. Where, where, where Chris Randy Corey, Coots? Randy Coots, yes. Um, and I'm forgetting who grade 10 was. Um, a coach from from mid-BC. So I, I, 
I'm really drawing a blank on that one. That was right. <laughs> but yeah, those those were it wasn't Dell. No. Kalmanerski from uh South Cam? No, don't know. That's all right. That's right. See, you know you old now, dog. You're old. <laughs> Can't even remember who coached you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there a lot of coaches. Yeah. So then, okay. So through this passion, you got Saints, obviously a, a driven, dedicated program. You know, it's a high level. You're playing all the best teams. You're high level 4A school. You got Brian Lee. Like, you know, at what point are you swirling around and going like, maybe this is something I want to do at the next level. And then let's talk about grade 11 and 12 and, and how those years went for you. Yeah, so yeah, I I always like I had this dream of playing in the NBA, right? And um, yeah, as we all did, I have a lot of uh, you know I didn't have as I had more realists in my my family or <laughs> than anything, right? It's, instead of dreamers, so it was more like I was pulled back into the realm of you can't. I think I'm the only player that's that missed actual games. Because my mom wouldn't allow me to play because I like I didn't do my homework or I, I think I, I skipped the class. We almost <laughs> lost game one of our lower mainland tournament my grade eleven year because I think I I skipped science class and then they, they had like made like a rule or something where if I skipped it I couldn't play the next yeah. game for not yeah. to be the mainland um, tournament. We 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 won in overtime. It was like a game against Point Grey, a game we're supposed to win, but I never skip the class again after that. <laughs> if you're a basketball player out there in the lower mainland or uh, BC in general, and you're looking for somewhere to play, we have a proud sponsor and that is PGC Hoops. You can find them at pgchoops.ca. And the thing that makes them unique and that we're proud to sponsor them and them be a sponsor of us is it's a true nonprofit basketball organization found in the east side of Vancouver. The mission is cost effective elite basketball for all. Find the website, take a look, register your kids, register yourself, look for the programs. And if you have any questions, reach out to me and we can contact you with the right people. This is a good program for the right reasons. We appreciate you, PGC Basketball. So was your mom, it wasn't uh, like T.O. or T.A. like laying down the rules. It was mom who was just like on you and then the school. And Saints do different expectations. Like there's high standards there, right? Like, Well, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I like the, the kind of the, you know, every high school kid, I guess, in BC gets their one page in the province with their high school year or whatever, right? So yeah. I wasn't even not involved. every kid, man. Relax. Like, they don't make it sound like. It's oh, a, a lot. Good... Of them. Yeah. Not it's a lot. lot. It's that's an accomplishment, man. Yeah. It was school. It was school because uh, Brian had sat me down and was, it was pretty real with me. He was like, "Look, you don't get your grades up, you're not going to be able to play basketball anymore." He's like, "To get to play basketball at the next level is is university level, and if you mm-hmm. can't get into university, you can't." you know, you can't play basketball basically. Ooh. So I went from D C F <laughs> to a straight A student and, um, it ended up being, uh, how do you say it? Life changing. Cause the only university that actually offered me a scholarship was McGill just because of my grades. They I was going to say, which is no joke at, academically. But yeah. It, so yeah. McGill University, um, there were some, some things that happened in high school and, um, uh, I, you know, a lot of doors closed for me, but um, Yale was the only one that was the only basically yeah, the only school that recruited me um, after my senior year, and, and that was basically because of my my grades. Um, and they were willing to, you know, take that risk on me. And uh, and then yeah, that once that door opened, and then everything else, the university side went well. So, um, yeah, the, the school thing was huge, I guess. Yeah. So why the doors closed? Do we want to get into that? I mean, we can. Um, I, 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 I had a, basically a lot of university options, um, 
and whatnot. And then um, my last year, going into my senior year, um, there was BC basketball provincial team, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And I thought it would be best for me to work on my individual skills um, rather than playing in in a a traveling tournament team where I'm just playing games. So I, Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to play... I didn't want to play. I wanted to work on skills because I felt, uh, and that's kind of been my thing, my career. Like I play basketball late. Even uh, the reason why I felt I've excelled, which I guess we can get into later, mm-hmm. after was fine tuning my skill side rather than just my naturally athletic side. So um, that's what I wanted to do. So I didn't even go to the provincial team tryouts. Mm-hmm. My, Ryan Lee and you know a lot of the coaches were all like, "No, you have to play the provincial team. You, like you have to." And I didn't want to at the time. And so anyways, I ended up playing slightly reluctantly. Um, and then it was just, it, w- it wasn't the right, right move for me. I, I wasn't having fun that summer. Nothing against um, coach, great coach. He actually helped me out a lot. It's just the program. We drove to Pitt Meadows every day, two hour practice in the morning, hour practice at lunch, two hour practice at night. So that's five hours a day, two hours of driving there, two hours driving back, seven days a week, the whole summer. I just, you know, I'm, I'm a, I was a kid. I kind of wanted to do my own thing. And, and, you know, like, so I eventually sprained my ankle right, right before the end of the season. And I kind of, out of frustration, I, instead of just being a man and being like, look, this wasn't the right decision for me. I, I probably shouldn't have played. I just want to, take a second for myself. I need a mental break or something like whatever. I just didn't tell anyone. I just stopped showing up to practice and I didn't show up for the flight for the national team tournament. And, uh, I guess that word got out and a lot of the local coaches at UBC, SFU, who were talking to me, weren't talking to me anymore, Mm. um, stuff like that. Right. So across the, across the board, um, yeah, it was kind of like, some silence and you know i brian lee reached out and was like look sean wants to go to maybe try out at sfu can you at least walk on and they're like oh we're not sure can you go to ubc and then no no nothing so um and so yeah, talk was, more about that how is that like that <clears throat> you're 17 years old and like working through that like mentally must have been hard right you see yourself you know you're you're in the upper echelon in the province and I mean, I'm a, I love Rich Goulet, rest in peace. He's my guy, but like, I know that he's not perfect and that not every, like, just like myself, I coach high school basketball. Not every kid I coach loves me either. You know what I mean? And well, so it's like not always going to be, no, no, no. You don't have to justify your, this is your oh, experience. Right? Just, I'm just like, saying at yeah. 17 years old, and then kind of like, you think that like I'm balling and the doors are opening and then all of a sudden like doors are closing. It's got to be tough. Yeah, it, it was tough, and mm-hmm. especially like to go around like, and you know, and you're going to... in your grade twelve year in BC. Like, you still have to play your grade twelve year. You know, no, what I mean? I, that grade twelve year, yeah, is, you know, like it's happening. Like, I'm no bad. one's like, where where am I going to go to university? And they're like, no, Sean's not. Don't come here or, or whatnot, right? So I actually had two options. My option was McGill University. Mm-hmm welcomed me with open arms and then uh xavier university uh out, out east uh nova scope nova Scot- Stain of x baby Stain of x right yeah coach can Kel- Kinchelski, man that's the og right there man he was you know one of their big players you know uh, yeah. he's a, so brian brian vouched for me it was like no this this kid you know made a mistake but he's actually a really good kid Mm-hmm. So they were going to allow me to try out. So I was like, no, I'm going to take the for sure option and go to McGill. So that's, that's how I went. I ended up going there. Okay. And school yeah. wise, who, who's the coach at this time? Uh, Norman. Coach Norman. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, what, uh, so, so what was it like, have you traveled out of a uh, province a lot? Do you even know much about the culture there? Like what's it like? Yeah. Like, like I was gonna say you land in, yeah, you land there, and it's like he wasn't even the one that recruited me. So oh, coach yeah. Daniel recruited me, and so I, I, you know, I ended up going there. I uh, 
two weeks before I'm supposed to take off to go to uh, camp or whatever, uh, I get a call and then like, Coach Nebio hasn't been uh, re-signed and we have a new coach, Coach Norman, uh, Craig Norman. Do you, you know, still want to come and, and play for me? This is... oh, That's why I was asking. Like, I was thinking of your timeline and I'm like, yeah. So, uh, and I was like, yeah, I mean, that was the only school that actually said we want you to come play. So, come here. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, of course. And he was like, you still want me? Am I still part of... He's like, yes, of course. And so went there and then, you know, uh, I just went to work. Um, mm-hmm. You get fireman. You know, I had some great veterans ahead of me, like uh, Denver Reed. You know, he was, a, uh, I think, all-Canadian and led all-time leading scorer at McGill and stuff like that. And so I know he, he became assistant coach into the program after that. So, and even now he's a, a huge part of the... The Quebec and Montreal uh, youth development um, stuff, and uh, him, and then Trevor Williams was over there too, older time national team. Uh, so all these great guys before me were, like helped me through uh, university and helped help me figure it all out. And I ended up having a pretty good university career. Talk about that, about you know, just sort of going from. Because that's an interesting perspective in in the sense of having a coach recruit you. Like I had friends who, in my day, uh, Triana was recruiting them, right? That was my time. And then he left because he went to like go do the Grizzlies thing and like be a broadcaster and do stuff like that and sort of... And then Scott Clark was their coach who coached at um, TRU for a bunch of years as well. So like, how does that that's a tough go. You know, you're 18 now flying across two thirds of the country, landing in Montreal, the home of poutine. What, what was it about? What was it about you inside? And then obviously you've talked about your mom a little bit, sort of sounds like there was some structure at the household, you know, a little bit of discipline. How was she able to let you go and trust that like you were making the right move? You know, that's a, that's a big thing, you know, or did you just lie to her and tell her that the coach was still there? <laughs> No. Um, honestly, um, so the assistant coach, Matt, was the one that um, was actively recruiting me and I was in yeah. conversation. So um, there, there, there was the coaching change, but I had, I didn't really have that many long or deep conversations with, with Coach Navarro anyways. It was more mm-hmm. the school that wants me. I'll be the, if you actually want me, I'm, I'm going. You know, like that was right, more... Right was that so when it was the switch it wasn't that hard of a switch because I, I had the phone call from coach norman and i said do you, do you still want me to as part of your program do you see me you know the new coach might want is a different group of guys it's like no I, i've seen you i spoke to matt I, I, you know i've heard you know you're, you're a good kid so you know I, I want you to still come and that was as easy as that it was you know i didn't really have any other options to be honest so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just uh, I went and it was a great decision. And of course, my mom was reluctant. She uh, wanted me to still be structured and um, whatnot. But, you know, she knew kind of if I wanted to continue playing basketball. That was the route I had to go. And she kind of let me go. And coming from unstructured to no structure, I kind of a little, my might have went a little wild my first couple of years, but uh, it was uh, That's it a different out. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And but, how uh, and how was that? Like I mean McGill, Montreal, it's good. It was a good time. Yeah, I mean McGill, Montreal, um, you know, you're living in downtown Montreal. You're an eighteen year old kid who's basically been sheltered his whole <laughs> his whole life. So um it's it was yeah it was a big change you know to go where you you know you're you're living on your own you're in a dorm you're around other people um, I guess you're in downtown right so places are open for you eighteen right so uh, took it you know it took some growing up my, my you said first places year. are open <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody else but everybody else figure the rest out <laughs> um, later hours too huh. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> I, I might have indulged a little bit my first year. <laughs> uh, 
uh, I, I, that's the thing. Like, I, I, I kind of lost, you know, like the dream at, at that point. I you know I kind of NBA was dream kind of became like not really a reality at that point. But then um, towards midpoint of my career, I, I started hearing about these overseas options, right? You didn't really mm-hmm. have, didn't have social media things where, or, you know, those, you, know, you don't see those things before. So I was like, oh, I could still play basketball after university. So I started to really dedicate myself. And, and that's kind of where I set a goal. Like, oh, I want to play pro. Like, I'll do this. And then that's stealing, stealing my questions, man. I love uh, it though. Keep going. No, that's no, great. Um, yeah. So who was it? How was it? Like, how did you find out? Was there a player? Was it just you doing your own research and realizing that there were so many things out there? Like, how did you come to that conclusion that, hey, I, after my fifth year or fourth year, whatever it is, I can, I can do this. So I, I came to visit my grandparents here. Um, and then I realized there was a professional league here because I was playing in the local like community parks. I didn't, you know, pick up, you know, it was Christmas break. I just wanted to stay in shape, put some yeah. shots. And all of a sudden, everyone plays basketball here at the park. It's, it was a culture shock, right? BC. Really? I, mean, I guess summer at Kitts Beach in Vancouver, right? Right. Imagine that on almost every basketball court, right? Like you just have, I got really? next. Yeah. So it's, so I was playing and I was. Is it still like that? Yeah, the you, you, you can book a gym to get shots up on the on a Sunday morning is impossible. <laughs> is this all the men's leagues are like every like it's it's wow. Popular, yeah. Um. So yeah, I was playing just pick up, and they're like, "Oh man, you're really good. You should. Why don't you play in the the PBA?" I'm like, "What? What's that?" And then stuff like that. Um, figured that out. Um. Then uh, when I was in at McGill, we I would stay there for the summers to work out. You know, um, we had we would get all these runs, so all these overseas guys um, would come back, like Ricky Volsi, um, Dominic Marciano um, played in France. Ricky played overseas, so there's a whole bunch of guys that you know had had done the overseas thing that would come back in the summers. And I'd be like, oh, I can keep up with these guys. Like we were playing men's league, we we're playing drop in pickups at McGill. We you know, we'd have open runs for our players and we just invite like basically the better guys to play against so we could, you know, mm-hmm. get good. Of course. Um wait, hang on, hang on. Are you suggesting just for the people out there that you get better by playing against people that are better and bigger and stronger than you? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh yeah. What a concept, eh? Imagine that. We don't just play AU games about against people the same age and level and skill. Okay. Sorry. That's just the salty coach in me there. I had to get that one out. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. A little coming out of the... I'll fall back. I'll fall back. I'll let you talk. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that a little more with the, the pro journey uh, on that one. Mm-hmm. The story's mm-hmm. there. But um, yeah, basically, once I saw them doing it, I'm like, man, why can't I do this? You know, and mm-hmm. so I, I really committed myself. Um, and I talked to like uh, Den Burke Reed at the time, who was our assistant coach. And as I was saying, he was my senior, my my last year. Mm-hmm. Out a lot, and then I just kind of tried to make that happen. And then my senior year, after I played my last game, I was invited by the Philippine national team. They found out my mom was Filipino, so they flew me down to Vegas for a national team tryout. Um, we were at Impact. Um, so they, they go over there. That's one, that's a cool place. That was where like KG, Rajan Rondo, Kyle Lowry, all, all these guys go there in the summer in Vegas. So playing at impact, uh, there, um, I made the national team played that summer, but then I had to go back for my last semester. I had a half semester cause I had a little too much fun my first year, um, to do. Um, so I finished that. And then when I went back to the Philippines, um, I ended up entering the PBA draft instead of uh, going back to the national team. And, uh, yeah, and then I, in 2010, I got drafted by the PBA. And then, now, do you have an agent for that, or how does that? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you, there's agents. Um, so the same kind of concept as like the NBA. So instead mm-hmm. of three teams in the NBA, we have 12 teams. Um, so team with the worst record gets the first pick 
give me the best record gets the last pick and then there's multiple rounds um and yeah so i was chosen sixth overall in 2010 and then just kind of made a team and then same thing same kind of concept i came in because they saw a kid that hustled a lot of some some athleticism with some potential on the skill side Mm -hmm. and um they only took a a bite on me and then i made the league yeah that was that so the real i guess have you played against dumont yet dumont no he's he's not uh in in the pba he's uh where is he where's he uh, actually, I had lunch with him last year to give him some advice. And yeah, get on. That's I love it. Yeah, he was laying. He, he played high school basketball with my brother too. So um, he decided to go to the, the university route for a year. So I think because you're we're allowed uh, five years here. So if you're done four years and you graduate over there, you can come over here mm-hmm. play a year. So he played for a University of the East this year. Had a pretty good season. Um, mm-hmm almost made the there's only a final four for the playoffs right so out of the nine teams i think it is only four make playoffs so they came out like fifth mm-hmm, pretty mm-hmm. season so i think he's going to try and enter the draft next year i uh I'm not 100 percent sure um but i think he's back in vancouver right now uh training yeah he, he is yeah okay so the number six pick like what does that mean how does that work how do you figure out contract like what is that you know, like you're a single guy, you're, but you've, you know, you've been out here, you've been out there. So it's comfortable for you. Right. I'm assuming like, it's not super overwhelming, but it's gotta be overwhelming to be like, damn. Okay, here we go. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you walk into a situation, I mean, we're, the PBA is a, a great league and we're, we're blessed uh, as athletes here. Right. So mm-hmm. um, it's not like other overseas jobs where you're worrying about getting cut every week or okay, time out, time out, time out. Pardon my ignorance. What yeah. is the, uh, what are the rules for like players? Like, are you considered a local? Are you a international? A like, so how does the foreigner, like, how does that work? So I, I would be considered team. like a local import, I guess you could say, although they, they've changed the rules. But when I, when I was first there, it was like, you're, yep. you're allowed I think before it was four or five Filipino Americans, they would call us Phil Ams, which yeah, would, would, would about, be, yeah. Because I'm half Filipino, half Canadian. Okay. Um, so you're allowed a few of those, and then the rest mm-hmm. have to be full Filipino. Local. Citizens. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. We changed that rule last year, I think, where it's now that there's no M. Because it was getting weird where there'd be two brothers. Mm-hmm. One was born in the Philippines, the other was born in Canada. So one could be play as a local one, one out of, but they're literally the same bloodline. So it, right. stuff, stuff like that. So they, they kind of changed it up a little bit. So, um, yeah, so that would make me like a local. So like, uh, now, but before I would be, uh, like a local import or like, cause so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. For example, like, I, uh, some players go play in Japan as a local import as well, or yeah, Korea, Taiwan, uh, and whatnot. So, hmm. so yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I just wanted to like touch on that. I just didn't know, but that makes sense too because you think like, yeah, one brother gets born in the Philippines and then his family decides to move, but he's like two, yeah. grows up in Canada or America, like you know, yeah. and yeah. Anyways, that's in. Interesting. All right. And so, so yeah, how does so how does it work? So it's pro ball. Like this is pro ball. So yeah. how does it work? How do you do it? Like, you know, like do they get you a place? Do you figure it all out on your own? You know, well, that's a little whip, way. like yeah. Right. So uh, as I was saying, the PBA, we're kind of blessed because we have guaranteed contracts, right? So you sign for what you sign and then God, you know, like uh whatever something happens, you still get get paid mm. or get cut or what I don't know. Like it's not like some of the other overseas. There's some contracts. savage there's some savage European places. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's dirty. Exactly. Yeah. So we can sign up to three years um okay. at a time. And then um you know uh the amount is negotiated into there and then the, yeah. the living 
places. Um, they're kind of like you. We pay you enough, you know. Like figure it out. Like you know, get your own place, basically. You know, like mm. um, uh, if you're if you're like really new or something, you might be able to get like a like a rental stipend put in there or something. Or a lot of times for Phil Fornos, they might put in like an airline tickets as well, so you can fly home to see your family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, is it all? Is it all close enough? And this is like I'm. This is how I roll on the podcast. I don't. I I do a little bit of research, but I like to know. Like I I like to have this conversation. You know what I mean? And yeah. find things out. So, is it close enough where you can get a spot, and if you get traded, you can still cover ground on the, or is it spread out? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. So yeah. Uh, yeah, all 12 teams are in Manila. So okay. when I get traded, I like stay in the same same house. I don't have to... I just move practice facilities, basically. Right. Yeah, yeah. So the way that the league works so that's is... That's nice. Super nice. Yeah. Um, there's 12 corporate corporations, let's say. So it's a corporate-ish league. So they, they take their branding and marketing budgets and, and buy a team. So the, the best team... Are, are recently have been like the San Miguel, like so the, the alcohol companies, the the Beerman, um, and Ebra and whatever. And there's other teams like the group I'm on, where, where like uh, there's the cell phone company, the power company, the highway companies, the team I play for. So um, they take their their marketing budgets and then they they play the team. So now we're on air for two hours during a game. We're on ESPN. We're on Sports Center, right? Like there's their brands are put out everywhere, you know, and then there's interview, we're like walking advertisements for, for them. So mm-hmm. and then the TV and the, uh, and, you know, the arena sales, that kind of stuff goes there. So, um, so, but because Philippines, you know, the, uh, they try to base all the teams out of Manila. So we play in various arenas around here. And then on the weekends, usually two teams will fly. So like Saturdays, are usually what they call out of town games. So two teams will fly to one of the islands. We have seven thousand islands, right? So we'll still play. Like I think um, there was just a game in CDO, so that's like an hour flight away. Um, and then it's a it's a kind of a big event for the city, and it's kind of cool because you you go yeah, there, yeah. bring the community. Yeah, yeah. The, the game's sold out, so yeah. you're like yeah. 10,000 or maybe five to 10,000 capacity, but it'll be over capacity. Right. So it'd be like rocking in the little, yeah. Little fire uh, marshals closing their eyes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> fire marshals cheering the game on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yes. dope. I love it. Um, so when you made it over, what was the first thing you noticed in terms of like from McGill to say pro ball, right? Like, uh, was it just sort of like, yo, what's up, man? And like, not as team camaraderie. Like, was it more? Was it like guard your own dude? Like, yeah. What were some of the things that you learned quickly when you started to play the pro game? So, um, first thing I hmm. noticed was we might have 500 people out of a deal game, you know? Yeah. But yeah. I'm over here. I mean, it's, the culture of basketball uh, of basketball in Canada has changed significantly. That's okay, though. But it still sucks, man. You can still say it. Like, I, if I get a chance, like I played for Kevin Hansen at UBC and I'm like, I, if I get the chance these days, which I haven't many times, we're all, we'll take the team that we coach. And I go yeah. and I'm like, how are there only like seven, 800 people here? Like, what are we doing? Man? Yeah. And you're giving like, you're like, you're charging like students five bucks. Like, I, I, I it doesn't make any sense. Like the Canadian thing is just, it irks me. So yes, you know, it's okay. So, yeah. You're not. You're not in the eggshells here, man. I'm with you. It's still, it's annoying because it's good product. But but I've just seen improvements, right? Like I, yeah, I recently went and I watched the, the BC basketball. um, So Brian Lee Santorian. Yeah. Right. uh, Finals, I think. Two. Right. So I went and watched and just like see that. that, It's it's like a video. Not the Agrodome. The Agrodome was still kind of cool, but. That arena was cool, but the graphics that they had, like the yeah. videos, the, the, the lights, the like this, this, this I, I haven't seen that level of, like, uh, how do you say it? Uh, me. 
production. Yeah. Uh, like in, in, so like the production value of, of basketball. Oh, for sure. Uh, for sure. So people came out. So, But I'm just saying at the university level in Canada, it's like, it's a good product, man. Like these guys are, and women, they're good players. Like, like you say, like McGill is 500 people. Like, come on. It's good yeah. hoops, right? Anyways, keep going with your point. Sorry, not so, another old man rent by my ass, but <laughs> yeah, you go here and you play pro, yeah. It was culturally basketball. The Filipinos love it, so it was just. Yeah. Um, they told me to get like a Twitter account or something, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> like, oh my god, like people know who I who I am, or whatever. And then at the time, it was just Facebook. You didn't have Facebook pages or all the other stuff for your. So I had all these friends requests. So I was like clicking, okay, accept, accept, accept. But I made the mistake of not creating like a secondary, like professional account. Yeah. <laughs> and I just had too many things. So um, <laughs> most first and foremost, then culturally, the, the, the pro level, it's, it's different because I mean, this is, this is livelihood now. You're not talking about five guys or was it uh, 14, 15 guys? Like I'd say at McGill in a locker room. You know, you're, you're not, you know, you're not going to get traded. You might get cut, but yeah, you're yeah. There together, you know, there's, there's less, uh, alter motives, you know, I guess you could say, right. So, um, some guys are really there to be a part of the, just be a part of the ride. And, you know, like they're super happy with being a role player, right. Or, or something like that. And they just, cause you know, like even, especially at McGill, like we had a lot of guys be like, Sorry guys, I, I gotta stop playing basketball because med school is way too hard. Yeah. You know, stuff, <laughs> stuff like that, right? That's true. So yeah. Not not everyone at there wanted to even play pro. It was just kind of they loved it, they wanted to be a part of it, and they just really liked being there. So now you go to the pro level, it's it's like if you if you're that other guy, you might also think, Hey, like I love this, this is great, but you know, mm-hmm. like that guy over there is making ten times more than me. So I gotta like try and you know like so there's there's still like you got to find the balance um so I, my, my advice usually to the like a young guy stepping in the league is embrace your role and be actively aggressive in whatever role you find right so if your coach is like hey look you're you're this guy i need you to be this guy like don't try and be the scorer because you're going to find yourself on the bench right away like mm-hmm. get that role and if you're allowed to shoot open shots shoot every open shot you get you know, and, and, and work on that to make sure you, you knock them down. Right. And then build off of that role. Right. Maybe one, one game, a couple extra shots come your way. You, you get hot. You might hit a, a shot. You're maybe not supposed, you know, like something like that. And then you build, you build, you build, you build, and then you get there. Right. So. Um, Love that man. Church on a Thursday over here, church on a Friday for you. How, but how have you like gone from that to like, I mean, whatever you hop on your Instagram, you got like 10, 10 and a half thousand followers and like realizing that like what you do in your community and what you, how you move impacts you. Right. Like it's pretty interesting. Has that been kind of interesting for you? Kind of just sort of like going from a Hooper and then, you know, stepping out and I'm sure sometimes someone knows who you are. Maybe they don't, but if you make a wrong move, it might not go well. Right. Like, you know, it, it, that is the good and bad of sort of you go to a community where people love hoops, but also if you mess up, right? Like, I don't know. So what I'm saying makes sense. No, it totally makes sense. Um, yeah. But I, I think, uh, I think like the way I, who I am now and, and my goals and stuff is I, I, I can be authentically myself and don't have to be ashamed of any part of that. So mm. I'm not like a, like an ass or, you know, like something like that. So where like, I'm just, I got to cover it. Like, I, I feel like who I am and I can just be me is, is fine. And I don't have to, mm-hmm. to hide anything to, to, to be a certain person in the media. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. Yep. That's fine. Um, but yes, I do realize that certain things, but I also, there's key benefits to it too, right? Like community building, a lot of the stuff I want to do moving forward, like is, is to use some of the influence I have to, you know, like that's my grandparents have done. Um, you know, you they, stole they my next question again, man. But yeah, no. I love it. Yeah. You, you know, know, getting longer in the tooth, you're still doing it, but keep going. Yeah. Like, yeah, your grandparents keep going. Sorry. 
<laughs> yeah, so they, they have a foundation here. They they help a lot of the communities with education, um, feeding programs, community development, like access to water, um, building entrepreneurial options, you know, for their farm crops, that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. uh, it's, there's cool things, right? And What's then, that called? Their, their foundation is called the ACC Foundation. The what? CC Foundation, like St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis of Assisi, yeah. So that's my gra- grandfather's favorite saint. And they do a lot of great stuff. And, you know, there's, there's always a lot of stuff to give back to the community. You, you get to know you're, you're blessed with some stuff and some opportunities. Whatever you're doing right now, listening at work, rolling in your whip, walk going for a walk whatever it is hang on for a sec you like jerseys you like stance socks you like throwback you like shoes you like anything related to basketball hit up atob ball and if you're not able to be there in store at langley event center check them out on the web and i guarantee you'll find something you like give us a mention and you'll never know shout out to our boy jeff ATOB ball for life. I love that, man, because I think like, you know, you think about the NBA job and yeah, the guys do good work in the communities and stuff, but in the countries and places that you are working and some other people, it's like literally people don't have running water, right? Yeah. Like it's a, it's a different level. And so it's dope, man. Kudos to you. That's that's amazing that you have that reflection and able to be a vet for your guys and and help them work through that, but also realize like what's my next phase? Next phase because you're still a young guy. And before we get to some fun questions, that's what I'm, I want to ask you is what's the plan for you and and keep building and and how do you go from there? You know, you got kids and what's the conversation like when you know? And and I'm not trying to jinx anything. I'm just, you know everything's going to keep going well, but. Is the plan to stay? Is it move somewhere? Or what do you, what do what does Sean and his family do? Let's say I always do planning ahead of ahead of time. So mm. beginning of my career, my plan was planning and investing, right? So beginning of my career was planning how do I stay in the league? How do I become a good or great player in this league? Right. So I I figured out a niche. You know, I had to be really realistic with myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, this athletic guy that could dunk over everyone and stuff. I had to be change my game to like, a, yeah. you know, I had to develop my skills. So I had to get, become a shooter. I had to become whatever. And then mm-hmm. the way I invested in that was I went and trained with the best. That's why I was going to say, but yeah, so I went back down to impact. I worked out every day with guys like Kyle Lowry, Rajan Rondo, um, who else? Like our scrimmages were, were crazy. It was um, Maurice Spates, um, Isaiah Thomas, like those are guys we would be doing drills with together. Um, that's why it would stuff like that. And I invest and train in that and then go do that. And then the middle of my career was like, Oh, I gotta do something with the money I'm making. So I got to kind of invest that as well. So then that option. So my, my brother, uh, has a, a fun called Pathfinder. In Vancouver, I've invested a lot of my money with him. He does really well. Um, he's a, a financial wealth manager, so uh, he does. He helped me out with that, and then it became like, oh, like what is he doing with my money? Like how 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 have I, you know, like what is? So I got into finance. I, I studied a bit of the CFA program. Um, mm. I wrote the first two levels of the CFA. Yeah, and that's where I was like, yo, I gotta get ready for the next phase of my life. Um, life after basketball because we retired super early. So mm-hmm. I ended up um, stopping the CFA just because it was very, um, like, I, 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 like I said, I had three kids, entry level financial analyst position is time consuming, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I ended up taking a, a master's in business, so MBA. So the. Um, oh, man. Good for you. Uh, finishing my MBA in two weeks. I'll what? edit my. So I'll be done. Oh, but... hey. That's freaking <laughs> huge, man. Thanks. Good Appreciate on you, man. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. So that's that's what I've been investing in is is my time in developing secondary life skills and, and um 
career opportunities for life after basketball. So I'll be done that. And I got another year on my contract and then we'll see, we'll see what happens. You know, I'll weigh out some options and, um, you know, uh, cool thing about being out here is you're playing on teams with the top owned by the top 50 or uh, top 12 businessmen in the Philippines. Right. It's all mm. so connections. Um, hopefully there's some, um, positions here or back home in, in Canada, who knows, um, trying to weigh that all out and figure it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But doing all that planning and, and prep preparation now, you know, I believe we would call this um, a growth mindset, people, for those that are taking notes at home. That's how you do it, man. Keep keep the moss off the rock and just keep growing and learning and, and doing the best you can. Kudos to you, man. That's dope. Really dope. Um, how's the body? Feeling okay? Body's Every, okay. Everybody that I've talked to like gets that are um, reflecting their career was more about like, it wasn't about the games. It was getting ready for the games, getting ready for the practices, right? Like, you yeah. know that, you know, like the the throw down well, McDonald's. Are you good? Yeah. My, my kid's knocking on the door. Just give me one. Yeah. I mean, no, 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 no. Bring him in. Come on. We'll sell. Let's say what's up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. They just got home from from. Oh, that's fine, man. My kid, my kid interrupts. Uh, well, he's he's on at least ten of the episodes. That's cool. I played one the other day when he was like, I was like Eli, because we went to this tournament in Victoria, and he was like, this guy just came over. We were walking to the locker room, and he's like. I've never met your dad and I've never met you, but he's like, I've heard you on the podcast before. And my, my son was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then we drove home and I played it for him. Like one of the, that he was on and he was like, dad, you keep that on there. I'm like, yeah, man, I told you we keep that on there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, your your yeah. last question was about my, my health. Or, or was, it was, yeah, just know. how's the body? How's like one of the things everybody talks about is, like I'm ready for the games, but it's getting ready. Like, you know, and depending on who your coach is and like walkthrough yeah. can be really light or it can be like tape up, you know? So how, yeah. how's that part of it? And what are you feeling with that? Um, yeah. So you're, you're 15 as a pro. Oh, see, you're so. like 14 or 15 now. Okay. Yeah. So um, that's a lot, man. It's more, yeah, it's more, a lot of my work is, 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 body prep, right? How do I, how do I keep everything right? How do I uh, recover? How do I uh, correct imbalances? Um, and a lot of recovery work, right? Um, your body just mm-hmm. doesn't recover. Uh, nutrition is a huge one too. How do I, how do you eat right? How do you replenish? Um, you know, how, uh, how do you reduce inflammation? Uh, all these different things, right? So uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's definitely not the same as it used to be. I can say that for <laughs> sure. Um, and certain things, um, right. Like early on in my career, I, I felt like I had to like win every suicide in practice, win every drill, win every, you know, certain things. And now it's like, no, I have to just do that in the game. I, I don't have to yeah. do that. <laughs> practice, right. Like it's, it's, um, practice. Um, how do you, how do I say this? It's, it's, it's way more quality over quantity at this point in time. It's Ooh, it's good way. It's done it so many times. You kind of know what you got to do. You just kind of got to continue the rhythm, continue to find that groove, uh, maintain the confidence, and then um, you know, spend the time in the the training room and the weight room to make sure you <laughs> that, the way you need to move when it comes game day. Right. So um, yeah, just uh, the recovery is not as fast as it used to be, but. Um, you, you see things, I guess, as well, right? So I don't have to move as fast. Angles mm-hmm, are, mm-hmm. You, you know, the angles, you know, the spots, you know, the different things. Um, yeah. And what's it like when uh, you come over practice and the kids are jumping all over you and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they like to wrestle. There are yeah. three. 
Oh, God. Boys. Are they? Uh, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I got to give them a heads up. If I hit the floor hard a couple times on my back's a little sore, I'll let them know. Or sometimes I'll just be lying in bed and they just come and they'll go like, people's elbow, and then like right in my back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> the, the, yeah, I, I structure a lot of stuff in my yeah, day, right? Now. Like, Sean Anthony is up today with a back. Uh, sort of back. All right, let's do some fun questions and we'll move on. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. cut up for a second, okay. but okay, we good. All right, so you're the lab rat. Like I said, we've worked, we, we've we've changed some questions for you. Episode one twenty five. Perfect. All let's right, see. so you the first one. So see, let's see what you got, man. Okay, uh, let's do the first one right off the bat. What what concert, dead or alive? You take in wifey, best friend, doesn't matter. Best seat in the house. Who are you going to see? You've seen them before, haven't seen them yet. Doesn't matter. Who you got? Uh, I haven't seen them perform, but uh, I always hear stories that the, the late Michael Jackson was like the, the best performer. So I just feel like I got I would have to see him perform. I, I, you know, it's 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 I never saw him. Uh, he has great music, and it, it just the way that people talk about his performances is. Sounds like a show that I, I would just have to watch. So the, the late Michael Jackson, I think, is, is the one. Anybody else? Um, if I really wanted to like vibe out and have some fun, I, I think uh, someone I listened to a lot in, in uh, high school was Tupac, the late Tupac as well. Right. So I, I feel like that's something I would have to see. And if you throw in Biggie and Tupac at the same concert, that would be even more. Right. But, uh, but those are the guys. Like I've seen a lot of concerts. I like concerts, so those are the two. I think we cut it, cut out. Ooh, could you imagine? Yeah. Like, live music too, man. I love live music, and I agree. I've seen a lot of concerts too. So. Yeah, recently one of the best. I'm ones starting I've... to get older too, where I perf. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I I just what? like. What you got? a lot of concerts but I, I i enjoyed the cold play concert like a uh, other year they put on a good oh, show man. many people recently because they're on tour right now a yeah. lot of our last few guests have been like cold play cold play cold play apparently they just kill it they killed it yeah yeah okay. okay um all right okay first of the randoms that have never been asked before what's uh -huh. the great what's the greatest cereal all time I, I'm not a huge cereal eater anymore. I can't, but growing up. We're not talking about right now. Yeah. We're talking about nostalgia, bro. Like what you got? Come on. Cinnamon toast crunch. Let's go. It was, That's it. I don't know. You're eating it. You got the crunchiness. You got the cinnamon and this. And then the added treat is when you're done, you might, you might actually add this another bunch of cereal into that bowl. And then when you got the little, you just drink the cinnamon toast crunch just milk. And, absolute sugar rush just yes <laughs> <laughs> that's no nobody can argue with that nobody um okay you can go filipino style or you're back home um but you're getting munchy maybe it's movie night what's the greatest bag of chips that you're gonna grab what do you got so this is nostalgic because it's just growing up in canada and i guess it's something unique to canada because they don't have it in Asia or um, other places, but ketchup or all dressed chips. They just, it's just the, that, you know, like walking home from practice and the, you know, there's a bit of snow outside. You got, you go to the Seven Eleven or whatever. We had a uh, Max. Max, yeah, on the corner and just grab a bag of all dressed or ketchup chips and just watch a movie or something. And that, that's go down a Blockbuster video. <laughs> get a movie uh um, people like what happened to the struggle of happen to go and rent a movie yeah. whether with your siblings or like a girlfriend or whatever it is like and then having to actually pick out a movie in the store that's yeah. gone it's kind of sad anyway uh, it just the nostalgia of ketchup or all yeah. dressed tips i just if you don't get it i just when you ask that question that's just what popped in my head I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. <laughs> Who have been some of the most important people in your life? Um, 
my wife right now for sure. She's she you know she's my rock. She, she helps me with everything. She's my chef. She's my nutritionist. She's my uh, I don't know help my assistant. My well, you know just everything. My lab. You know my confidant. All that stuff. Mm-hmm. And my mom as well. So you know as, as hard as my mom was on me, she always had my best interests in mind, and um, uh, it's she's always you know, um, been a huge support for me throughout my whole life. So, yeah. Dope. Love it. Um, books or movies? Books or movies? Which one do I have to choose? Yeah. Or do you, you know, like both? I, I say podcasts. Hey. <laughs> you tell me. No, I, I mean, that's that's what I, I enjoy doing uh, recently. Is I, so I got like about 45 minutes Podcast? to an hour. On the way to practice, I maybe a YouTube video, podcast, something like that. What do you Audio got? Podcast. Um, to be honest, like I, I like listening. Like, Other than I, a hoops journey, obviously, is like well, your number one, one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Just mm-hmm. listen to your Tyler Kepke podcast the other day. Nice. Um, I like uh, Huberman, or I like um, just kind of like. If I want to get in a sort of mindset or, or or something, I'm trying to study. I just like google that topic so like let's say right now i've been um you know i got a lot of stuff christmas you know practice nba like this all this stuff so Mm -hmm. doing my i've been like uh listening to podcasts about like the uh, vagus nerve like how to stimulate the vagus nerve to increase relaxation to balance out the activities right how to optimize recovery stuff like that so like uh, i'll search certain things that you know or or whatever topic as well right isn't it dope that that's where we're at like you can just hit your commute and like something will just tap into right exactly what you want i think it's so awesome and i'm i'm the same i love it i love just yeah say less it's dope yeah do you is Uh, there like do you have a do you have a certain follow like is there or are you just sort of a top topic guy uh no i have some follows like that like i like like um you know, optimizing your body and your mind kind of stuff, right? Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I do, I do, I do some like y- YouTube stuff too, right? Like I like interviews like this. Is there right? a PBL podcast? There needs to be PBL podcast. Come on, man! What there are we a, doing? There is a PBA podcast now, and it just, we... just did a. They just took off. They, I think they're one of the, the, the top sports podcasts in Asia. I think it's called um, Let It Fly Podcast. So three there you go. Uh, four players um, just started. I think they're only on like episode five or six. Yeah. Or Let me see. Shout out, man. Yeah. Let it fly podcast. So they have 23,000 followers on Instagram now. And yeah, they're the number one sports Twenty three thousand. Sheesh! Come on, man. I'm gonna tag him. We'll get <laughs> we'll get three hundred of their followers. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Start. You should be, man. There should be a podcast over there interviewing all the people like that have played hoops and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. All right, okay. It's blacktop. You four dudes, threes and twos. Play to twenty one. Stay. You win. Come on. Who you got? All time. All time, or, let's, let's and you can take this anyway. You can go like your favorite players all time, guys that you played with. Like it's your world, man. We're just living in it. This is your episode, Mister Anthony. I, oh, I he, slid, he slid back in his chair, and now he's like, he's been hunched no, forward really, for an hour and a half. Now he's like rattled. What's up? Originally, I was I was putting down like who I want to hold court with, but now I'm thinking about go like, with that. No, go with that. I don't want to. I think it would be more who five guys I would want to play with, and and like just four. Sorry, four. And there's a coach, right? And have a conversation. Yeah. So, like, for me, my favorite player of all time is Steve Nash. I just kind of just want to be on the court with him. Mm -hmm. But I enjoy watching uh, Steph Curry play and, um, you know, the stuff he's doing off the court, building his brand, building other brands and stuff. That's cool. I would have to say uh, LeBron, too, right? His his life is the way he does stuff on the court, off the court. Um, mm-hmm. you know, um, KD, uh, you know, he's 
done. These are just what I'm saying. It's not just basketball. These guys yeah. have done much. Like they've launched. Like just look at LeBron and all the companies he's he's launched and, and whatnot. Um, and I probably put MJ or, or uh, there as well. Just just how he's just I don't know mindset dominance. You know, he taking the Jordan brand to where it is. You know, like what kid has not had a pair of Jordans? Is you know in the basketball world, right? Like it's true. He's taking that brand and you know like a pair of Jordans can sell for how much? Like it's <laughs> too, much, too much now, but it's yeah, right. That's it's crazy what he's done. And it is um, cool where I think like nowadays um, these guys can can brand themselves, like you said, brand a lot. And I think it's awesome because you know I like listen to some podcasts. I like I love Barkley. Like you know I'm 46, so you know, late eighties, early nineties is my kind of era. And these guys talking about like high fiving when magic Johnson signed a million dollars a year. Right. And now it's like, you can branch off and just be this like global impact. I think it's dope. I think it's amazing as it should be. You can become a businessman. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's, what's really cool with the NBA right now is, um, out of all the sports leagues in the world, they take that the most serious. It's like, Mm -hmm. um, players well maybe it might, might not be the nba it might be the players association um, or, or whatever sure um, they do seminars like right, they just had kim kardashian come in talk about la- launching skims right and then Sh- Sh- shy gilchrist was one of their um no way brand ambassadors right so it's like they have seminars they have internships so if you wanted to go to google facebook like or your fashion gucci whatever like they they mm-hmm. do internship roles so it's like build. They, they know a pro career is really short, right? Like mm-hmm. most people are done in their thirties. So um, they help they help their players develop secondary careers, which is kind of cool. So the NBA does it better than I think any other pro league. Agree. Two questions left. Can I go on a rant for a sec? Mm-hmm. You talk about Shea Gills, Alexander. So you go on Canada Basketball's website. You want to get the you want to get the Shea jersey, okay? Yeah. So you can put the number two in. You're only allowed 12 characters, Sean. You're only allowed 12 characters. So I was on I was on a phone call last night. On God, what do we say? What do the young kids say? No cap, on <laughs> God, whatever it is, okay? <clears throat> With Lids. Lids is the affiliate of Canada Basketball's merch, okay? And I'm going to call people out right now because I'm annoyed. <laughs> you can't get Gilgis Alexander on the back of the jersey. So, like, I talked to this really nice guy. He was from... I was talking to him. He was from the Philippines on behalf of Lids Canada. There are, you only allowed 12 characters on the back of a jersey. I'm like, do you guys not realize this is the MVP of the FIBA World Championships, right? He's one of the best players in the world. Like, do you know how much money you're losing with people who can't get his last name on a jersey? Like, do you know what I'm talking about? Like, you go on a website, you have to put the number in, two. And then you have to yeah. type in Gilgis Alexander and it stops. It stops after Gilgis. It's like Gilgis dot and then there's no room. I'm like, how can I not get this guy's jersey? They're like, I'm so sorry, sir. I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, oh my God. I was losing my mind. Sorry. I had to get that out. Wow. You can't get his jersey. Like, so I said, can I get just a blank jersey or just a number two with nothing on the back? No, sir. I'm like, oh my God. This guy's this guy is like going to be in the MVP race soon here, right? Oh, like he was the first team All NBA. Like, I'm like ready? I'm like yo, you guys are you're losing money, and like and this guy was very nice. He was like, thank you so much, Mister Mitchell. I appreciate your feedback, and I was very nice. I wasn't like an ass, but yeah. I was like, you, what are you guys doing? Like, you need you're, you need definitely. thirty characters here. Like, who cares what someone puts on the jersey? Like, anyways, that's my rant. Well, they, they, I was able to watch their. Uh, yeah, I saw your photo. Yeah, you went. How was yeah, that? It was, it was great basketball. Just to see that, just to see all the different games, just to see the level of, of yeah, it's, it was amazing. And mm-hmm. he was falling out. I feel like if he didn't get in foul trouble, the, the Serbia game, uh, it would have been a different story, right? It was. Agree. He picked up those early fouls and. You know, we rely really heavily on him on the offensive end. And oh, man, it was FIBA, FIBA games, a whole different beast, too. Like, 
It's, it's wild. Okay, two questions, man. Thank you for your time. Um, okay, one, do you have a hidden talent we don't know about? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't uh, don't really have one. I feel like a hidden talent is something you just do in secret. So you kill, you kill karaoke at the parties. Come on. No, I'm the comedy <laughs> guy. I'll pick out the funny Are song. You? Yeah, I'll do like a Backstreet Boy. I just, I just maybe. Just kidding. Maybe, maybe if I'm in Canada, I'm a decent singer. But every Filipino sings karaoke over here. So you have everyone is just top of the like. You're you outnumbered. To, yeah. Canada, they'll, be, they'll be like ten. Like a, they, they rate them a ten. Like, <laughs> I just, I can't. I just can't. So if I go up after a guy who just knocks down every note, every, <laughs> sing any song, right? Yeah. I, I, so I just have to throw on the comedy. Like I just, just do like a Backstreet so Boys we, <laughs> and then and just make everyone. Die. <laughs> I just died because like I teach at a Catholic school, right? So it's like, you know, like our coach's room, it's like full of Filipino food and like I love, they're just the best. And like, you know, it's amazing. So I'm picturing you in BC killing it. And then coming to the hometown, it's like, yo, take a step, man. You're not ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question. Who do you want to see on a hoops journey, but you got to get us on? Like, you, got, uh, it's on you. You're the plug. So I have a, a few options. Sure. I just want to know, is it anyone? The main thing is anyone? Yeah. Uh, nah, it's your world, man. Like, there's no, what a, yeah. Like uh, a guy you haven't had on who's done very well, not just in the Philippines, but all throughout Asia. Uh, Matthew Wright. I don't know okay. if you. He's, no. he's, a, he's an Ontario kid. Um, okay. Uh, grew up. I think he was an All Canadian with em Emerson Murray's here. Okay. So Emerson Murray's another one from Saints. I don't know if you've had him on the show. Not yet. Okay, so Emerson Murray and then Matthew Wright. It was the same graduating year as him. So he was one of my teammates out here. Okay. Um, so he went from Toronto. He played. At the University of New York, I forgot the name. Then he moved out to the ABL in Indonesia, played in the PBA, and now he's in Japan, uh, killing in Japan. He's played for the Philippine national team as well. And uh, wow, great, great kid. So I think he'd be a cool East Coast option for your podcast. I love it. Another homegrown Vancouver, BC, St. George's kid who won a provincial championship, the only one. Yes, sir. Uh, and, uh, then played overseas as well for a few years. Matthew Wright, St. Bonaventure. St. Bonaventure, yeah. Dope. Love that pull. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Connect you with either one. If, uh, if you want. Yes, sir. Why? Well, yeah. would love that. I mean, we, we'll get Emerson on for sure. Yeah. But uh, Matthew Wright, you got to be the reach out. Okay. Yeah, yeah for sure. He's, uh, he's now in, uh, I think he's playing. In Okinawa, he's on a B League team in Okinawa. That's dope. So, so dope yeah. that you can actually say that. Like people that you know from Canada are playing Okinawa. You know that's cool. Um, yeah. Last it's, thoughts, ideas, yeah. reflections. Your career. You're still going. Um, you know, when I've told a few people in the community here that we were going to chop it up, and they were just like, "Nicest guy ever. Just a good dude." Um, so. Thanks for being with us. Any last kind of final, you know, ideas or anything that you didn't get out and, and thank you, man, continue success. And I think this is a great story to share because you're kind of doing it in an unconventional way that people don't think about. And I think when you can take your passport and who you are and carve that into a career and like you say, a business and make things out of it and you're continuing to grow and be a, a growth minded person, I think it's dope, man. So thank you. Yeah. I mean, um, I can say anything it's it's uh don't limit yourself you know I, I you know I guess one of the things was I didn't really believe in myself early on mm -hmm. and then, you know well once you commit to something commit it like you're I think a great example is your your podcast with Tyrell Mara where it was like he watched the NCAA game and then as soon as he was done him and his dad you know kind of growth mindset thing like just wrote out that as a goal and all the steps to get there so for the younger kids watching is it's like don't limit your your dreams dive in big and uh you know kind of figure out that plan to get there and then 
purposeful practice from then and, and against like you were saying better people than you like you know like go find the best of what you're doing and, and get advice from them and, and, and grow right like access to people is so easy now right like mm-hmm. when yeah, i want to shooting I, I called up uh mark price's shooting coach I flew down to atlanta worked out with him for three weeks changed my whole shooting form everything like st- just stuff like 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 that like just you know figure out what you need and what you need to do and and, and you know like uh, go after it enjoy it. enjoy the journey that's the whole point right the whole point is the journey yeah it's your podcast. he said journey he said journey my people he said journey yeah. And that is episode 125 of A Hoops Journey. A low-key underrated episode as far as I'm concerned. Great guy. Lots of success. And you can tell that there's going to be more success to come, whatever he does in his future and what he chooses to do when his kids aren't elbow dropping him from the top rope. Um, All the best, Sean. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to everyone. And we'll see you on the next one.